Carbs. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Rachel Carberry. And in January of 2013, I traveled to Taiji, Japan as a volunteer to help document the annual dolphin slaughter that occurs there between the months of September and March. When I saw the direct correlation between the dolphin slaughters and the captivity industry, I just knew I had to do more to help stop that. When I was in Taiji, um, you know, we watched the trainers work directly with the dolphin killers on a regular basis, and you can see the captivity industry right there in, in the town of Taiji with um, several of the floating pens that they have for the dolphins they've taken out of the cove. So I was there and I was in Taiji and I was giving a voice to the dolphins that were being killed and I just needed to lend my voice to the captive cetaceans around the world as well. So while I was in Japan, I emailed my friend Suzanne Ali and I told her I had this crazy idea for an event. I also remember I actually emailed Naomi Rose and told her about this idea and she told me it was a great idea. So this encouragement that I had behind me uh, really helped me create this global event. In those beginning moments, I could not have guessed what Empty the Tanks would become. Empty the Tanks is a worldwide public awareness and protest campaign. My goal was to create a campaign that could educate the general public about what captivity means to cetaceans. These annual events allow activists to reach to the public all over the world in positive and productive ways. In the first year, we had 21 locations in 12 countries participate, and it was a big success. I just want to give a big thank you to Rick O'Berry, because he's been supportive of this event since year one. Fast forward to 2016, in the fourth annual Empty the Tanks, where passionate individuals stood together and said no to dolphin and whale captivity at 65 locations spanning 21 countries. This, this included three locations in Russia, five locations in Mexico, and 10 locations throughout Spain. In 2015, I also started a little side, side extension of Empty the Tanks <laughs> called Selfies for Cetaceans. Basically, um, this is just a way that people can still participate in the event even if they can't attend an event near them. Obviously, that's Samantha Berg in, uh, in Alaska this year participating on the day. Um, so on the big day, anybody who uh, wants to participate but doesn't have an event to go to, they can snap a photo of themselves with uh, with a sign and send it in. Their photos are featured on the Instagram page and the Facebook page and in the albums and everything. One of the greatest stories that came out of Empty the Tanks for me so far is one involving my new friend Sharon in Mississippi. She went to the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies by herself in 2014. She was a one-woman protest that year. I told her story on Facebook and the next year, she was joined by four more activists. This year, she doubled that attendance, and there was a total of nine people that showed up to protest that facility. She's an example of how yet yeah, one person can make a difference. Over the years, Empty the Tanks and the discussion of dolphin and whale captivity has been featured in numerous news articles. This helps us make our message reach more people every day. Every location throughout the world does have a um, official press release that gets sent out to the media in that area to help promote the events. I have a lot of ideas for the future of Empty the Tanks. This graphic was borrowed from my friends, Tim and Carrie at Ecojoya. This is one of the new shirts that you can get right outside in the lobby. It features a map showing the 13 locations where captive orcas are held. My goal is to get an Empty the Tanks demonstration at all of these locations. So far, we have nine of the 13 covered for the global event. I am also working on a portion for the website for an Empty the Tanks club. This is something for kids and teens. They can create these clubs at schools or in their neighborhood, and there will be various activities, ideas, and projects that they can do as a group 
to not just help captive cetaceans, but the oceans as well. The continuing theme this week is that we need to encourage the next generation and make sure they understand that they can make a difference no matter their age. The Empty the Tanks campaign started when I was sitting in my hotel in Japan after witnessing another dolphin slaughter, and it has become a worldwide movement. I am inspired every time I see someone use the hashtag Empty the Tanks on a post or a photo while continuing to spread this important message. Empty the Tanks will be back again next year, and I know it will be even bigger and louder. This has been an incredible journey for me, and I am so grateful to everybody who has supported Empty the Tanks campaign and been a part of its growth. You can get more information on the website, emptythetanks.org, and please follow the campaign on social media. On the website, uh, we have an educational brochure that you can print out and use for any of your events. There are also downloadable posters uh, on the website that you can download and use for any event as well. On Facebook, we created uh, Facebook profile pictures and banner photos that you can change to your profile banner photos and basically help spread the message to even more people on your page. I'm going to finish up by sharing a video I put together highlighting the fourth annual Empty the Tanks. This is an event that took place in May of this year, and these are the individuals that gathered around the world on one single day to say that it is time to empty the tanks.
has any questions, but can answer anything. Yes, Kim. Yeah, that, it's funny because I don't totally remember how I ended up meeting all these people. I will say social media is the reason Empty the Tanks is a success because it allowed me to reach out to different people. Sometimes I just went to a group that I knew had an organization fighting captivity in the area and I would send them a message and say, do you want to be involved in this campaign I'm starting? Um, there was a woman there, um, I think her name is Delphine, and she just... She speaks English and Spanish, so she's able to kind of be my Spain connection with a lot of people. Uh, the same thing in Mexico, there's a couple of gals there that help me coordinate with all of the other people kind of within Mexico to do the event. So Spain is just, they're on it. They, there's a huge group of people and lots of organizations trying to end this and they're working together, it seems like, to do it. So yeah, it's just, it's social media, just connecting with people and just sent out messages. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Jim. You mentioned that you have thoughts about where you want to go with Empty the Tanks. Can you give us a teaser at all? Well, it's, I want to continue growing it, obviously. I would love to see the location number continue to grow, even though it's a little more work for me. I'm happy to do it, just organize more and more. Um, like I was saying, I would really love to get a demonstration in front of all of the locations that have like captive orcas, for sure. Um, it's kind of hard because there are other parts of the world where people aren't, they're not as free to speak up against, you know, this kind of stuff the way we are. I know, you know, there's a reason why um, there's no events in Singapore because they can't do it. And then I'll tell you the first two years, I couldn't get anybody to touch Lower Park. Nobody would go near that, that event. I couldn't, everybody was too scared. And that's why it's amazing to see how many people show up to that event now. I don't know what happened, something shifted and now they're not worried about the, uh, the owner of that park. So I think it's just continuing to grow it and um, working on more with that Empty the Tanks Club idea, trying to do more to get kids involved, to have it be this sort of year-long thing. It's not just this annual event. This is something we can fight for continuously every single day. It's not just showing up on this one day protesting, um, but to continue with that. Yeah. I saw um, the one, I think it was one protest in China, right? Yeah, Ocean Park. Right, so that event, um, it's, that's the only China event that we've had so far. Again, it's hard to get people to want to speak out freely. And at that event this year, those activists in Hong Kong got a little more rowdy because they were, there's pictures of them, they were going around barricades, they were pushing a, a, away from the cops. And that, I used that picture because it was just, that was their event. They, were on, they wanted to get to the, to the gate of Ocean Park and they wanted to get up to the front and the police were blocking them and putting the barricades up and they were, they were pushing back. And I thought that was a really, I think it again just continues to show this shift that people are wanting to stand up against this. But that is my only event in China so far. Some of the areas of the world are just harder to get, you know, people are scared to stand up. But yeah, I'm working on it. If anybody knows any connections in those areas, some really brave activists, let me know. <laughs> yeah. In South America, I saw one in the northern part of South America. Was that uh, Venezuela or Colombia? Or uh, Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's nothing going on in, the, in, in there's no parks in the, the northern part of South America that is in. No, they were, uh, most of the, the protests in Argentina, the big one was at Mundo Marino for Schmink, thank you. I know I say that name wrong when I go to say it. That is, you know, one of the saddest orcas in the world, in my opinion. So um, I'm hoping I can gather more and more momentum behind that event as well. I think it's important to get more people there. They had a small group that showed up, but that's the um, that's the South American representation. It's Argentina right now. Well, the Olympics coming, maybe there'll be some more. Yeah, 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 some yeah Rio de Janeiro was in there. Um, and there was another event they... La Plata, like the Plata dance walk. Yes, um, but there was another event in um, South America, and I'm just blanking on the name of the, of the country and the location. It was not at a, at a park, it was more of a public awareness event, um, but the uh, host, she had some kind of accident, she broke her leg, she had to cancel the event. 
Um, but hopefully that event, even though I'm blanking on the name right now, the location, hopefully that'll be back on the list next year. We had a couple events. This would have been bigger this year, but there were a few events that didn't happen. It would have been a little closer to 70 events, but there were just some events that had to get canceled for various reasons. How do you cope with the time difference, like date changes? Because I know it's on a certain date, but of course with the date changes, yeah. what do you do there? I don't sleep much on the <laughs> like 24 hours of the big event because while I'm trying to sleep, you know, I know that we sort of have this clock and everything starts on this end of the world and it shifts. So everybody's doing it on the same day. They're just several hours ahead. So sometimes I'm getting these messages, you know, from Australia and I'm asleep and then all of a sudden it shifts over to Asia and then it, you know, just keeps shifting into Europe and stuff. So we kind of go down the line. Typically Hawaii would be our last event. But um, because in the summer, Vegas is so hot, they typically do an evening event, so they end up coming back to being our final, final event. But I'm usually just awake a lot during those few days. I don't sleep much. So just trying to cope with it that way, basically. I just make myself as available as I can be for the hosts, for anything they need. Well, it's absolutely amazing. You're a credit to the yeah. so thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and we're the activists, so we can like give a voice to your knowledge. You know, you guys supply us with the factual information to back up these claims, so we're not just standing out there saying, well, I feel like it's wrong. We actually have this factual information of why it's wrong, and we couldn't be out there um, giving out this proper information without, you know, your guys' incredible minds <laughs> supplying it, so. Teamwork. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sponsors, have any companies stepped forward to say, you know, we, we're against cetacean captivity, what can we do? So I know that there have been campaigns, online campaigns to stop transporting the animals back and forth with different airlines and, and trophy hunting as well, but has anyone come forward that way? Um, not really. So as of right now, Into the Tanks isn't a nonprofit, and so like all the shirts and anything that you guys see out on the tables that you buy, the money goes to Free Morgan Foundation and Orca Network because this is something, I'd be doing this no matter what. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm just kind of a born activist. This is what I'm meant to do with my life. So I'm not, um, I usually, if somebody emails me and they have money they want to you know, donate or anything, I just direct them there. Like if you go to the Empty the Tanks website and it says donate now to help, it redirects you over to like Orca Network's page or something. So. Um, as far as I, I mean, I haven't gotten any direct messages from, from people, but I usually, if, when people have emailed me individuals saying, I really want, you know, my, I'm having a wedding and instead of gifts, I'm asking people to donate. I want them to donate to empty the tanks. And I usually just say, that's great. Um, here are the websites you should donate to these organizations. They're already in place. They're already been doing work. They're established. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to be the activist voice for the work they're already doing. So typically just redirect people back and away from me in that sense. Yeah. Any other questions? I am open to that for sure. Yeah. So Marineland Canada, we've had issues um, getting an event there. Obviously one, there's legal stuff that's sort of chaos there and people are a little nervous, but we have a willing volunteer to take it head on. Be my empty tank host for Relay Canada. <laughs> um, but the event this this past year, and then the date we pick for next year, it's the weekend before opening day for Marineland. So um, it's been difficult to have an event at Marineland when they're not open. So. There's no, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I would be open when I get your information, I'll post that to the hosts. I typically involve everybody that hosts the event worldwide. I, I involve them in it because when it's our summer, you know, we're enjoying this really sunny weather. It's great for protesting. It's really bad weather for people in Australia. So um, we wanna make sure that everybody has good weather. So I include everybody in the decision-making for the date. And then we'll mark them off the list completely. <laughs> I'm gonna check list going. Yeah. No, that's great. I like that idea. Yeah. Um, it's the um, it's Mother's Day weekend, so it's the Saturday of Mother's Day weekend again, which is what we did this past year. Um, 
for kind of a couple of reasons. One, it, it worked out well timing-wise for everybody because it's not too hot in Vegas, it's not too cold in Australia yet. It's kind of just worked for everybody that Saturday. Um, but it's also, we kind of feel like it's a, it's a weekend to also acknowledge all of the, you know, the mothers within these dolphinariums and SeaWorld parks to, you know, all the, all the mothers that didn't get to have their, their babies and their proper you know, motherhood lives. What, so, yeah. what day is Mother's Day here because it's different in other places in the world? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's the beginning of May. I think it's the um, second weekend of May, if I'm correct, yeah. And it typically just worked well for, for everybody, but I'm going to pose the idea of skipping back a weekend to include Marine Land in there. Thank you. Thank you. Too many dates that I can't process that. I'm on my downtime right now. This is my like relaxation time in between <laughs> the next step through the dings for a test. So I don't have to keep it all totally in my brain. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Hi. Um, so just a thought, because you know my brain keeps going too. <laughs> is that what about having like a team for empty the tanks? So. If people can, are scared to speak up, maybe having volunteers that are willing to travel to different locations to represent those parks in those yeah. locations. That's a really great idea. Yeah. I like I like that idea because um, that would be something you know to look into. I don't know you know, legally what would happen if like I went to Singapore and protested in front of Resorts World. What would happen to me? I don't know the legalities of that, but it's something I would totally be open to. And if people are up for you know, being a part of that, which I think there are definitely some diehard people that would be. I can't afford to pay legal fees because I direct all my donations elsewhere. So, uh, but that's a great idea. Thanks, Mel. When? So, in relation to IG officially, where was the protest in Japan? Um, it was at, uh, I'm probably going to mess up the name, but um, in Inoshima Aquarium, um, which is closer towards Tokyo, if my geography is correct. So it's not super close to Taiji. Um, but there are a lot of Japanese activists starting to step forward. I think, um, I don't know if you guys follow, the, you know, like the Brico, all the Brickle Berries work and everything. They have a great team of Japanese activists that are starting to join and, and show up because that's what we, we need. We need activists within those countries to speak up. You know, it's, it's, that's what we need in all of these countries. We need people in China to, to go to these places and say enough's enough. And people in Japan to say this is enough. So, yeah, it's not, not very close to, to where Taiji was, but at least it was in Japan. <laughs> any, any other questions? Good. So, to direct all the funding to other places, do you have a day job here to support yourself? <laughs> or are you just, uh, how do you do just, that? Yeah. Well, um, I was working um, at a local nonprofit and animal sanctuary that is close to my house. And I just recently, I, I quit back in November, or December, sorry. And I don't work right now. I am a full-time mom to four fur children. <laughs> it's a lot of work having two dogs, cat, and a rabbit. So <laughs> yeah, that's my life right now. No, I, um, I'm actually taking the naturalist class here next week in hopes of continuing my education with these animals so I can continue to be a knowledgeable voice for them. Um, even though you know I'm not a scientist, so I don't have that kind of mind going on, but I can still continue to educate myself and, and, do, and do those things. But currently, not working at the moment. <laughs> Which is okay. Yes, you are. You're well, working, yeah. I'm working. I'm just not getting paid for the work I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm paying my rent on planet Earth. <laughs> Thank you.
people were always activists. Maybe Empty the Tanks just gave people the platform to sort of speak together in unison against this issue. I think that was something that just was needed worldwide. We needed something where we could all stand together as one group and, and speak out against this. I think all these people probably can, always felt this way, but now they have, they have a, a platform to, to really it's speak the voice. Is it just you getting laughed Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless you're Sharon in Mississippi and she's just standing there by herself. Well, she's getting more people. Yeah, she's, she's amazing, yeah. Uh, if there's no other questions, then... Thanks, guys. Thank you.